A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 187th episode of the Divita for Education webinars brought to you by Notebook. Just over two years ago, when the pandemic had just set in and schools had closed down, we here at Notebook felt it was our duty to set up a platform for educators to connect meaningfully on discussing problems they were facing with the rising need of digital education and online learning and arrive at common solutions. Today, 187 episodes later, this platform has grown much bigger than we could have ever anticipated. All thanks to your love and support. We have discussed extremely curricular topics here like digital learning, NEP and assessments, extracurricular topics like sports and theater, topics like school finance and management, and even involved topics like mental health. Today, we have a very relevant topic, self-care for educators. Well, modern day educators have a really, really important role to play. Managing a room full of kids, day in and day out, dealing with everything starting from their studies to their finest of emotions. It is an incredibly challenging job. Teacher burnout is a term we often hear these days. And what do we do to counter this? Teachers do need to have a self-care practice. And this has become absolutely imperative in the modern times. Our first speaker on this topic is Mr. Philip Barrett. Mr. Barrett retired as a deputy headmaster from the illustrious Zoom School in Daradun after 44 years of serving in education across various institutions. Mr. Barrett served the Dune School as housemaster, head of department, dean of activities, dean of student welfare, deputy headmaster, second master, and acting headmaster. With great distinction, he also carried out a visioning exercise for the Dune School in the year 2011 through an in-depth study of a number of British public schools and various schools in the US. Mr. Barrett qualified as a leadership trainer at Farrington College UK in the year 2000, and he's also an athlete, an adventurer, and a naturalist. We here at Notebook are absolutely privileged to have Mr. Barrett as our senior advisor. So thank you so much for being here today, and over to you. Thank you very much, Gagori. I hope I am audible. Absolutely, sir. And very, and very good evening to you, Achin, Abhishek, Shabayo. Magna and everyone over there at the notebook office, as well as our esteemed panelists and uh, guests who've tuned in. I'm so glad that notebook has chosen to address this topic, dealing with care for teachers. And this follows up with last week's topic, where we spoke about the balance between home and school. The both topics deal with looking after teachers, treating teachers like human beings, helping teachers to be more effective in class by taking care of their needs. You know, when I first became a teacher, I, it didn't strike me that I had to stand for hours. We stood and taught. And after we finished our teaching, it was playing sport. And then there was activities and we turned home. You know, we, we got to sleep very late at night. Uh, it's very taxing. People think that teaching is an easy job. It's not an easy job. And we need to look after ourselves. Very often I speak to teachers at workshops and uh, sessions that I have with them. And I always insist that they find something that they need to do for themselves, uh, something that they love, uh, something that they must pursue apart from their teaching, uh, correcting and invigilation. Uh, they have to have something that's outside the school. Uh, their lives can't be so enmeshed with the school and schoolwork that they lose sight of what gives them happiness and pleasure. Um, all of us have things that our souls crave for and which draws us. And we owe it to ourselves to find the time to pursue uh, these parts that bring us uh, peace and fulfillment. Uh, often I say, often I hear teachers say that they are wedded to the school and that they are dedicated and loyal. And this is all very well, but it also leads to a very monodimensional way of looking at life. Uh, people like that generally fall ill um, because, as I said earlier, a deep part of us craves for something more. Uh, we, you know whether it be a hobby, a passion that keeps us who we are. And all of us need to find work that taxes our minds, exercises and stretches the body and something that gives rest to our souls. We must all choose something that um, calls us from the depth of our being, something that we have longed to have, you know, longed to, to have done. And, um, uh, you know, which, is, which uh, makes us who we are in a way, whether it's fitness, yoga, music, acting, parasailing, rock climbing. Uh, there's so many things that, that a teacher has the time to do and must find the time to do. Um, in all my travels to schools abroad and even in schools in India, 
I find that the most effective teachers are those that uh, have something that holds them, that, that takes their interest outside the classroom. Uh, I know there was a teacher, there was a headmaster in a school in Calcutta who actually was a rock star. He sang and he was a leader of a rock group and a band. Uh, there are many Olympic sportsmen who actually were teachers. And uh, I know of another teacher who's a concert pianist. And uh, he, he has to balance his, uh, his work as a teacher, his study, his preparation with the performance he gives all over the world. Um, well, I find that in India, it is more difficult to do that because um, uh, you know there's a lot of load on teachers always an increasing load on teachers also you know a lot of teachers have to turn to tuitions and during the holidays which we get we get three to four months of holidays which is more than anyone and we deserve these holidays i think term time is so hectic and so tiring that a teacher's three to four months is well deserved but if you're going to sit and take tuitions during those holidays then you return to school absolutely jaded and tired and bored, unfulfilled, no travels, no hobbies, no reading and new experiences. And these tired and uninspiring teachers often fail to excite children in the classrooms. I think holidays are given to teachers for them to, to do other things. Um, I think being physically uh, healthy is imperative for teachers because as I said earlier, teaching is a taxing and tedious job um, with low energy and with you know, niggling illnesses, you can't be affected. Um, I think um, a robust body um, and the clean, active, inquiring and con uh, curious minds that teachers should have is what uh, excites children. Uh, many schools have uh, physical and medical, uh, medical checkups every year. In fact, um, we have to pass very stringent medical exams to be actually uh, given a job in school. And each year, many schools spend a lot of money in having all their teachers uh, undergo a medical test just to make sure that they are in good shape. Um, teachers seldom look at the hidden elements of their salary packages. Uh, we don't only get money, we also have time. We also have the school facilities, whether it be the yoga room or the swimming pool or the various mountaineering trips that we go on, um, the other intellectual offerings like student exchanges, study sabbaticals, book allowances, all this is actually geared into keeping the teacher um, mentally and physically healthy. Um, you know, today's doctors are slowly returning to the belief that when you treat a person, you treat the whole person. It's a combination of our biological, environmental, and emotional states. It's not just treating physical ailments. Uh, like, like the doctors of yore, they looked at the whole person. And therefore, uh, I think that a teacher too has to look at himself, not just as a dispenser of knowledge and facts and information, but he also has to uh, look at himself as a body that needs stimulation, healthy stimulation, whether it's emotional or health. Um, I think emotions and happiness are a part of what makes us healthy just as stress and anxiety makes us ill. And uh, I think heads of schools have to look at how they can care for their teachers in order to keep these teachers happy and fulfilled. Uh, again, when I, when I meet heads of schools, I always, um, I always say that they must be concerned not with just books and marks and how many people are getting 95%. Their concern should be, how can I keep the teachers healthy and happy? And the teachers who are healthy and happy then take care of the things like marks and corrections and books. Um, a happy school involves an academic, physical, and emotional stimulation. Um, so cultural, physical, and intellect, intellectual activities uh, are the three areas that even teachers must look at. Um, one of the reasons I took to teaching as a, you know, as a young man was because I got vacations. And uh, I could lead a balanced, holistic life. Um, so I not only taught, but I had the ability to advance my education. There was library, there was workshops, there was carpentry sheds. There were so many activities that I was thrown into, not because I was given the job, but because I was interested in, in developing myself. Um, and uh, you meet so many interesting people. 
people come in to, to, to address the children, guest speakers. These are all very important things that keep us going. Um, also, I mean, Achan would know much better than me, but big companies like GE and Edison, I know, Edison Electric, they, um, they, they really um, <clears throat> corroborate what I've been saying. They, they put a lot of importance on health, recreation, and family life uh, as a means to happiness and more job productivity. Um, for example, a CEO of one of these companies might come up to an employer at a function, at a, at a dinner, and just uh, say, uh, you're getting a new treadmill, uh, or we've given you an annual subscription for this uh, new yoga course that is open, or a gym um, uh, subscription for a year. These are the ways in which good leaders, good heads of schools inspire and help teachers. It's also a way of saying thank you. It's a little reward, but the reward is in the form of keeping teachers healthy. Um, if one chooses uh, teaching as a career, um, one must not just look at it as a means of a livelihood. Uh, we don't come into this job to make a livelihood. We, um, we need to look at it to, as, as something that gives us a life, a life that we look forward to a holistic, all-rounded life, a healthy life, not only because we are working with young people, but because there's a physical and emotional uh, element to it. Um, uh, I think teachers must find their own fulfillment outside their job and have a life outside the classroom. Um, they must aspire to have a life where self-care is factored in with family holidays, with one's children, time to develop their hobbies, time to grow intellectually. Um, in fact, I would suggest that most schools should have sabbaticals for teachers. So every seven years, which is a sabbatical, a teacher should be given um, a chance to go out and do something that he hasn't done. Take a trip, write a book, um, you know, do some research. Um, it's very important to keep the, your batteries alive because I think teaching is not a sprint event. It's more a long distance endurance race because if a teacher's lifespan is going to be 40 years of teaching, then I think it's important he looks after his emotional and physical sides and not just have a burnout as Gagori mentioned earlier. I think burnout is, is a very common, um, it's a very common thing with teachers. Of course, they won't say they're burnt out, but what happens is they, they're less enthusiastic that skip to the classroom, that enjoyment to prepare, that, that excitement to learn new things, all starts to fade. And these are signs that they're jaded, they're tired, they need a change. Um, I think that, um, um, you know, uh, the other thing that I must say is that over the years, schools have added onto a teacher's load, slowly and imperceptibly, uh, so much work that a teacher doesn't realize. You know, in my school, there was each year there's something was added on, whether it's Trinity College of Music or student exchange programs or the IAYP or the MUN or the world debates or a new activity was added on, a new responsibility. So very imperceptibly and gradually, the load on a teacher is added without adding to time. You can't add time. You only have 24 hours in a day. And uh, teachers being teachers, will take on this load and, and want to do their best. But what's happening gradually and underneath the surface is that teachers are getting tired out. And then the main job of teaching is going to suffer. Um, we all need um, school forums where we have honest and open communications with our colleagues, with the school doctor, with our heads of school, where we can actually um, talk about our own welfare, what we want. I know that each year there are um, appraisals with the heads where we can express ourselves and what we need in terms of a holiday or something uh, that the school can give us. But even before that annual appraisal, I think it's important that we have open and honest communications where we ask for less load, where we say we need rest, where we tell people that we are terribly tired or frustrated or that we want to um, teach an, uh, you know, a more senior class. And I think that the role of a head, as I said before, is to look after the staff and to remove impediments, any impediment that comes in the way of making 
a, 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 a staff member or a teacher happy because and a, and a bad head or a poor head will be somebody who flogs the teacher till he's almost dead. Um, also, the other thing I find is that people who take on more in school are given more work and the load comes onto them. And teachers who are less effective or who don't do the job well are given less a load. And that leads to an imbalance in the, in, in the workload of teachers. The willing people, the good people get more and the lazy teachers get less. And that actually adds to the load. And I want to end by saying that if we teachers have to develop the whole body, the whole child, body, mind, and soul, then we teachers too need to look after our bodies, minds, and souls as well. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, and over to you, Gagori. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. As always, you have set the ball rolling and uh, you couldn't have been uh, like, we couldn't have asked more. Like, you're truly, truly the subject matter expert for this particular topic. Thank you. Gabriel. Thank you so much, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker on this topic is Mr. Achin Bhattacharya. Achin is the founder and CEO at Notebook, a chartered accountant by training. Achin was the director at Deloitte prior to starting Notebook. He has worked in India and abroad in various senior capacities in G. PwC, KPMG, and Deloitte. Oshin is a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Eglat and Wales, a fellow of CEI, a member of CPU Australia and CPI Ireland, and a member of CIMA UK. He is also the recipient of the prestigious Indian Achievers Award. An avid reader and a passionate traveler, Oshin has keen interests in economics, history, literature, and philosophy. He's a regular speaker at various forums and chambers of commerce, and also contributes articles to numerous publications regularly. He's also on the board of some of the most renowned corporates and contributes significantly to their brand strategies. Ochin, a very good evening and over to you. Good evening, everyone. Gauri, am I audible? Absolutely. I once again welcome all of you to today's session. I remember a quote by Martin Luther King Jr., a very appropriate quote, who once said, of all the forms of inequality, injustice in health is the most shocking and the most inhuman. The history of self-care is something that we may not know much about. The term self-care has grown in popularity with over more than I think 55 million uh, tags on Instagram. It has been trending, especially during lockdowns and period of uh, COVID pandemic, what we saw last two years, 2020 and 2021. So if we haven't already, we are probably starting to hear more and more about self-care routines and practices. The way I look at it, self-care is a way we prioritize. We prioritize our own uh, emotional, mental, and physical well-being. But having said that, success self-care may look different for each one of us with our own individual needs, aspiration, and situation that we're in. Now, understanding the origin of this term may help us connect more deeply with this and also find out what eventually we want to get out of our own self-care. The history of self-care began in 1950s and grew in power and popularity to the civil rights movement. But today, of course, it's a well-known term. Taking care of ourselves holistically. Now, having said that, it has had a very transformational journey throughout the ages. Legendary Greek philosopher from the fifth century BC and inventor of the method of, for, for discovering truth by asking annoying questions, Socrates has one more string to his bow. He's the founder of the self-care movement. Now, initially it was to describe how patients, were, patients who were institutionalized could cultivate a sense of self-worth through acts of care, preservation. Now today, if you go to social media, 
it's easy to think of self care simply as a series of uh, instagram posts candles bubble baths mainly accessible to a very specific section of population people in urban areas relatively well off now however now again today's origin of today's self care industry can be deeply embedded in the black power movement of 1960s and 70s in communities across across the world especially in us the medical community latched onto the term self care in the 50s before the black panther party in us popularized and politicized this particular term during the self care movement now the fullness of the black panther party's legacy has only recently been uncovered but there is reason for self care at that particular point of time if you look at civil rights movement it was community based it was value driven and it was activism supporting so practicing self care was the only way to ensure lasting social justice for communities who were ravaged by police brutality and systemic racism now these movements also coincided with a more niche wellness trend that was less about procuring most basic tools for survival and more about improving one's quality of life and that's where the medical community comes in so the term wellness it was born from a disappointment among doctors and nurses with the ways in which traditional western medicine failed to address full needs of patients at that particular point of time so the public's attitude towards those who championed a more more holistic approach to fitness one that pushed for positive health rather than just absence of illness was not unlike it is it is very much expected and this particular trend that started continued i remember uh, watching a documentary in which the opening lines were it was like a uh, documentary made in 19 i think late 70s early 80s the opening lines were wellness now there's a word you don't hear every day wellness is really the ultimate in self care and that's how they describing wellness before presenting some patients and doctors who were interviewed and who described this 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 transformation from merely not being ill to actually being healthy promoting wellness so one is repair and the other is maintenance one is once we fall ill we visit a doctor and get treated and the other is we are aware we are aware about the fact that we need to stay healthy by proper diet proper exercise fitness routine so this this particular journey has been explained very beautifully so this holistic fitness lifestyles marked the beginning of a new era for self care and this was completely disassociated from politics which which earlier started this the black panther movement etc now the shift continued 1980s 90s and fitness and wellness lifestyles began to move from fringes of society like initially confined to very urban pockets people who are extremely well to do to more mainstream towards the masses and naturally became more commercialized suddenly yoga classes appeared on ymca schedules in health clubs now contributed to what was described as the lightening of the tone of many of the original subversive ideas even i think birds have been a very appropriate comment about corporates so many fortune 500 companies showcased their wellness centers provided for employees now fast forward to a decade of 90s remembered as a time of economic boom and political peace after decade long cold war but it, it wasn't all roses and butterflies it also was not a time for revolution but at the start of 2000 especially after 9/11 again the world was thrust into a new era of self reflection and belonging and the term self care 
underwent major redefining. Now, before now, the term self-care was still closely tied to movements from which it came. However, after 9-11 attacks, as a global village, our collective understanding and post-traumatic stress disorder changed. So there's a new movement. And suddenly we saw trauma therapy for veterans, first responders, and throughout the world, there's so much more awareness about self-care approach. Now, this was all followed just a few years later by economic recession in 2008, which affected the entire world. Now, these event events are key plots on the historic timeline of self-care and integration into the global health and wellness dialogue. In some societies, and of course, the perception is changing for the better, but in some societies, still, it's kind of frowned on to think of self-care. People think it's kind of selfish. And especially very unfortunate, it is, it is very unfortunate at times that especially, and we, we have seen this in many areas, backward areas, I'm not talking about India, I'm talking about globally as a phenomenon. In, in many places, it's still considered a luxury. But honestly speaking, I think we have graduated from this. This lack of attention to one's stress level and diet and fitness can lead to multiple medical issues. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity. Now, this recent shift or change for the better of taking self-care more seriously, I think is a welcome step. So those practicing and encouraging self-care regularly. So there's a very, very uh, nice book in which I read a quote, famous quote. The book was 1988 book of essays by Audrey. And the quote said, caring for myself, I repeat, caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation. And that is an act of political welfare. So the fact is, that, and also in some, some, some certain cases, there is a strong connection between caring for oneself and caring for others. For instance, in rehab and counseling centers, employees and counselors are actively encouraged and they are taught to care for themselves, for self-care. Because at times, they, they suffer from compassion fatigue. They are continuously taking care of others. It's very important that they themselves stay safe. Only then they can care for others. It's like when you're traveling on, in an airplane and the oxygen mask comes down, you have to first put the mask before assisting others. So caring for self and society can actually be interconnected. So these are some thoughts that I wanted to share. Now today's topic, I think is a wonderful topic. And as Bharat sir rightly mentioned, so this is a complete series. Like in the last session, we discussed about uh, the work-life balance of esteemed educators. Here we're discussing about uh, self-care. We are discussing about the importance of self-care for those who always put their students' interests ahead of their own interests. But I think it's very important that we, as a society, our collective conscience, as a society, we should ensure that our esteemed educators are appropriately taken care of. Because only then we will be able to build a better tomorrow. So we have a great uh, esteemed panel here and a very senior educators with decades of experience. We look forward to hear from them, their views on this important topic. I thank all of you for giving me a patient hearing. Over to you, Gauri. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for those wonderful deliberations. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as he mentioned, we do have a wonderful panel lined up for you. But before we start with the panel discussion, a little bit about us here at Notebook. PS Notebook are an edtech platform that creates short videos pertaining to the school curriculum. This means that every topic from every subject of the school syllabus has been converted into a series of short videos that can be used in two different cases. One is when you as a teacher are starting out a topic in your classroom, you can play one of these videos as a method of visually introducing the topic to your students. These videos are just six to 10 minutes in duration and take up very little of your class time while offering the right kind of material to students to generate curiosity and excitement. 
The second is when the student is studying at home much later. They have access to the same videos on their personal devices, be it a laptop or a smartphone. They can watch the videos over and over again until they get a very clear understanding of the topic that you had taught. What I am going to do now is play you some short snippets of notes videos so that you know what they exactly look like. Hello students. Welcome to a brand new lesson by Notebook. Let's try a small experiment. Take a little stand and place a cup on it. In the cup, put a strong magnet. Take a small metal paper clip or pin and tie it with a string to the base of the stand. The metal is attached to the magnet and tries to stick to it. But the string is not long enough to allow this. So the pin appears to be floating in midair, defying gravity. Show this to your teachers and say that you have proved Sir Isaac Newton wrong. Food that we eat contains carbohydrate in the complex form. Once digested, it is broken down in the stomach to form glucose, a simpler carbohydrate. The glucose is transported to all the cells of the body and it is here that they meet the oxygen taken in by respiration. In presence of oxygen, glucose breaks down to give energy. The woman now makes a most fishy statement. She says she has always liked the wrong kind of people. She agrees to let the robber go on one condition. She asks him to break open the safe because she had forgotten the numbers. She needs the jewels inside it to wear for a party. Well, ladies and gentlemen, those were some short snippets from notebook videos as you just now saw. We have today connected with over 3,500 schools and have had more than 44 lakh students benefit from our videos. If you head over to our website www.notebook.school or use our mobile apps for Android and iOS, you would find more than 10,000 such videos at your disposal. With that, it is now time to introduce the wonderful panelists that we have with us today. We have with us Ms. Pratiba Sopori, Principal, Springdale School, Jammu. Ma'am is a passionate leader with experience in pedagogical leadership. She has over 22 years of experience as, as an educator. Prior to her current role, she has also worked as HOD Competency Social Science in Jodhamal Public School, Head of School in British International School. She has also been the observer and evaluator of CBC examinations. She has been awarded from Bulb World Education, INTAC, IAYT, Global Edu Leaders, P Square International, Wednesday Times, Asian Summit on Education, and with Acharya Chanakya Siksha Samman, Srijnatmak Yokta Award, MUN, and many more. She has published many articles in various magazines like Namaste India Magazine or The Mentor Magazine. She has adopted the village as Mailpur Kothe in Vishna village in Jammu, Balgran House for Destitute Children, and is a member of the Sahodaya group of schools. Ma'am, a very good evening and welcome to the panel. We also have with us Dr. Lalit Charasya, Principal Nandi Vani Public School, Kashambi UP. Sir holds an MSc, BA, and a PhD. He started his teaching career as a science teacher in Delhi Public School, Prayagraj, then PGT Physics and HOD. He has worked in three branches of Delhi Public School from the post of teacher to vice principal. He has a teaching experience of 18 years, including eight years as a principal in CBSE schools. Currently, he is teaching around 125 students free of cost in his school because their parents are financially weak. Sir has been awarded many prizes and certificates for various philanthropic and education-related work. Sir, a very good evening and welcome to the panel. I would kindly request the panelists to unmute themselves and switch on their cameras, please. I would come to Sotibha ma'am first. Ma'am, a very good evening. Good evening, uh, Gaguri, and when, uh, I am really, uh, I feel really pleasure to speak on this platform and get connected to the, all the esteemed leaders and educators which are present here. So the topic self-care is very really important uh, in the current scenario because uh, during COVID times, we have seen that uh, since we uh, were at home, uh, the classes were online and it was almost for teachers, for educators, it was almost 24 into 7 uh, work. So during COVID times, we all learned that health is important. First priority is to health. And when a person is healthy, 
so he can uh, crack uh, anything uh, any uh, challenges which comes uh, with on his way so uh, i think as an educator uh, self care uh, is important and with the self care uh, like uh, working as an educator the time management is very important so when uh, a person has time uh, manages the time properly so he will not be he or she a person will not be burdened with the work if he goes through the time and he prioritizes the time as per the needs of the day like i know that uh, i have to uh, for tomorrow i will make a checklist that i have to do uh, these things and the uh, priorities which are which i have to give the first preference first i should do that so that the, the work should, so that i should not feel burden with the work and the input which i am putting in all my work so there is no output the expected output is not there so self care is uh, really connected to the time management now uh, as an educator uh, to balance the long term goals first of all we need to organize the day to uh, need to organize the day means unimportant work can be carried on later and the important work can be carried at the first priority so all it needs to balance the time to manage the time so that i can uh, get maximum with my inputs secondly strategical planning is the needs uh, is should be there like strategical planning me means that uh, i have to give the if i have 10 um, work to do a, a day so what i have to do so how much time i will give to uh, one specific work then second then third so similarly strategical uh, way of doing the work is most important thing with which we can take the thing uh, care of all the thing then we should not overload the work overload of the work means that if i am in a hurry that today i will do all the things this and that and i will do the checking of the notebooks i will plan my work i will plan my uh, methodology and all the pedagogical activities so i will not be able to plan the things properly what will happen i will have a mental tension when i will have a mental pressure then i will have a pressure on my health also so the things will mix up and it will become a mess while at work we have while we are at work we have to be very much clear that we have to keep the personal issues aside because if we are connected with our professional if we will mix professional and our personal issues if i am in a school so i am in a class but my half of the mind is towards my family i have to do that when i will go home i have to do that i have to do this thing i have to do so it will become a mess what happens the things will go uh, in a wrong way neither i will be able to carry the things of my profession nor i will be able to carry the things of my personal life so to make myself sound uh, mentally and uh, like uh, with uh, my mind should be uh, sound my health should be sound what is uh, what i have to do i have to prioritize my things in such a way that my professional work is also going in a orderly way and my personal life is also going in an orderly way now i have to respect my time also because if i will respect my time i will keep the time management for everything as a as a educator i am also a mother i am also a wife i am also a daughter i am also i am i am the consolidator of my work and family so i have to respect the time and respect the time is that like if i will uh, i will prioritize all the things then i have to work 24 into 7 but when i will respect the time that i have to keep i know that at 4 o'clock i reach home but i have to keep a uh, fixed a time for my phone calls so that the rest of the time will not get messed with my uh, uh, other things so i have to be very much particular that this lot of time like one hour or two hours 
I have to make myself available for my phone call so that I will satisfy all the queries of my uh, whatever queries come to me, whatever phone calls come to me, they will completely get satisfied and then I am free from all my professional work. Second thing is that the most important thing which I do personally, I keep my phone switch off after I do all my, uh, I complete my all phone calls and I do all my professional work so that for a time, I will give rest to my whole body, to my mind. I will engage myself with my family. I will spend time with my family. I will spend time with my interesting hobbies. I can watch TV so that the stress of my work will get over. So self-care means I, what is uh, my opinion about the self-care is to love myself. When I have that capacity to love myself, I can love my work. I, I will love my students. I will love my profession. I will love my workplace. But unless and until I will not love myself, I can't do justice with anything, anyone, neither my family nor my work. So I have also to see that I have to learn to say no at times, not all the time, because as an educator, as a leader, or as a teacher, I have to take the things from others. I have to take the feedback. I have to take the criticism. I have even to take the uh, praises. But at times when I, it's not, I should not be fed up. I should not be uh, argumentative. I should not be rude. And for that matter, I have to take some steps back so that after that, I will be completely relaxed to converse with others to have arguments with others, to take meetings with others. And most of the thing is to take care of my needs. Uh, I have so many times, uh, there are many times where I have to rush for the meetings and my meals are left. But I have to make a plan that whenever I have to go for meetings, first I have to fill my tummy so that I can have a healthy conversation. I can have a healthy talk. So the the first priority is love myself. Have respect for your body. Have respect for yourself. If I will respect myself, if, will, if I will respect my body, if I will love myself, then I can have the same type of emotion, sentiment, relation with my work also. That These are my ideas where I feel that self-care is very important. And with that, self-love, and time management is more important for taking the self-care ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, that was absolutely wonderful. I would next come to Lalit Chauras here, sir. Uh, sir, uh, my question to you is like, uh, the work-life balance is uh, getting worse day by day. So how do educators take care of themselves and what are you doing in school to particularly make sure that the educators do take care of themselves? Thank you, Gargori, ma'am. Good evening you, to all all of you, especially uh, uh, Philip sir, Achin sir, Pratibha, ma'am. I hear you very uh, clearly and I do agree with all their points, but rather than just sharing my ideas for self uh, care for the educators, I would like to make you understand all the viewers and the panelists also why this term self -ed care for the educators came to us. Why we are discussing on this topic. Before pandemic, it was not a very big deal. In this pan after the pandemic, many schools they have not paid salary to the teachers. Many schools are closed. Many institutions are closed. After pandemic. It's a point to discuss why teachers are going in depression, why educators are going in depression. All of us will be agreed by the point. Many teachers in this sector, education sector, they are by chance. They are not by the choice. And the point of self-educators arises just because maximum teachers, maximum educators have not a clear vision for their life. And why they, are, why they don't have vision? Just because they are by chance. 
everyone will agree some teachers are in the schools or i should say more than 75% teachers are in the school whose age is below 35 years they are studying they are preparing for the various kinds of examination so 99% focus are there on their own career to build up their career so they are not giving 100% to the children to the kids even sometimes you might have uh, will be knowing in the morning time when suppose school time is 7:30 8 o'clock 8:30 teachers are in hurry to reach the school if they will be late the principal the coordinator the senior thought will put red mark over the attendance they will say everything once the educators will be having a good idea they will be having the vision then they will they can make a plan they must make a plan after making a plan an educators must analyze their plan if there is some if there is some kind of problem is there if he or she is finding professionally or personally firstly educators must differentiate between the life between professional and personal the parent who has handed over their the career of their kids to the teacher i would like to emphasize my words the parent who has handed over the career handed over the careers of their kids to the teacher to the known person i should say stranger and teachers they are not taking care of them just because they are preparing for their examination they don't have plan they are not working hard just because just because they are busy in the education but suppose if teacher is teaching educators is working in these sectors if they have a plan at what time i have to reach what is the difference between my professional what is my my professional duties why i am in the in this field why i am not in another field if i am in this field then the teacher must realize the need of the student and no doubt a teacher wake up early in the morning doing hard work checking the copies examination blah 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 but if teachers have plan i will only emphasize vision and plan if teacher have a vision that this is the my this is the goal of my life as as a principal i have my goal to what i have to do the point the i don't think there is a need of self care as a principal to me because i have differentiated all the things um and educators must plan they should just give some time to read the book if they are puzzled they should read some motivational quotes they must write books as per their hobby they must read some books they should do some creative why we are only just changing behind the students to learn 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 right 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 why we are not teaching them some innovative ideas why are we not letting them to be in the ground do as the notebook show one example gagori ma'am you just showed to us which is against of gravity as notebook says this is the newton is wrong but the concept of physics is behind this it means my simple concern i want just let one uh, i just want to tell to everyone why we are not letting the students to open their mind in the ground why only in the fourth boundaries of the classroom let them go in the lab let them go in the playground let them go in the music room activity room everywhere many schools must plan trip excursion and simultaneously me as a principal i do gossip with my teachers outside my principal office i sometimes i assemble all the teachers and i say this is the meeting unofficially i just ask uh, about their family members and i me as a principal i cook once in a week i offer a good dish to my wife my family members this is the small small points which we can self we can have our self care we can just come out just as pratibha ma'am said ki after completing all, all her work she made her mobile switch off because she wants to give all the some uh, quality time to his to her family similarly every educators as a teachers pre primary teachers they are puzzled because parents are worried students are not learning some students are not bringing books copies they are puzzled 24 into 7 and not only 24 to 7 it's all whole year 365 days my simple suggestions to those teachers to those educators they must take calm walk they should listen music as per their choice 
I live in Prayagraj. Sangam is there. Sometimes I take my family members to go to take bath in Holy Ganga, Holy Sangam. They must take a calm bath, relax bathing. They must express their emotions to the family members. They must have a group discussion with the friends. When we were in the school, we must we should just uh, we should go in flashback when we were the students in class 11, class 12 in the colleges. We had a just uh, gossip points. We were meeting after the coaching classes. But nowadays, we are just rushing to reach the school. Then after going back to home, work in the kitchen to take care of the child, to take care of the family, grandparents. Again, preparation for early morning. This but every teacher and you know in our sector. More than 75% teachers are lady. They have a responsibility over the over the home. They can't, they can't let her family untouched. But and you know, while checking the copies, while checking corrections, the answer sheet, every time teachers, their family, the ladies are puzzled. And you know, if lady is puzzled, whole family is puzzled. So my good suggestion for do, for them and the top management of the schools also. You, we must appreciate our staff members publicly. If a teacher has do, done a good job in academic or activity, course, scholastic, scholastic, anywhere, holistic learning, anywhere, we must appreciate them publicly. We should not wait for a function. In the morning assembly, we can appreciate the teacher. Even we should have, just as a principle of what I sometimes I do, I celebrate the birthday of a teacher. I sometimes I, I uh, offer surprise party to the teachers, surprise gift on their anniversary. This kind of thing really gives immense touch to the student, to the teacher with the school management. And teachers feel sometimes special, they feel special that they are connected to the teachers. Until teachers will not feel connect to them as principal, to the management and educators, they must learn that these are my hands, they all are my family members. We must give award, we must give some prizes to them. The inclusive care, appreciation, is all kinds of things must do. And then after the daily life, the professional, personal, a teacher must, will must differentiate. And uh, now I, <laughs> what do I say? That person, but the many teachers they have a different different kinds of problem. It depends the problems of urban area, the problems of metro cities can't be imagined with my school because my school is in a in a rural background. You know, many parents are coming in my school who are not able to fill their admission form. My staff member right. they help them. So problems are Wonderful. not equal. But yes, what yes. I do, I sit with my teachers. I don't make them stay back just after the school, just uh, because of meetings, meetings, and meetings. A management and educators must give. What I have planned, I have, I'm just in my uh, planning by 2025, will be have a child development fund for my staff members. And many more, it is in my plan. So once teacher will be connected to, uh, connected to the student, to the school, they will feel uh, special if they'll feel be uh, with the staff members, all the colleagues, management, and educators. And definitely, educators will have to think about just because once will they differentiate the life between professional and personal, definitely they will be having their own, the fundamental, the, the uh, marvelous life, and they will enjoy the teaching career. Until a teacher and educator will not enjoy this profession, if they will be feel loaded, as Achin Sa was saying, we just and uh, management or principal will not give a load to the teachers. It will be it will be it will be vanished if a teacher will understand their responsibility not for the school, for the society, for the student, for the nation. Then and once they will enjoy, when the students enjoyed in the school, teachers will enjoy. When teachers will enjoy, management will enjoy, and there will be no need of this kind of. Uh, uh, worriedness with, on which we are doing. Many teachers are suffering from many kinds of disease. Their families are suffering. You know, uh, one small kind of disease generally uh, find in our, these are small pain in this neck while checking the copies. 
because once mm. we, we are sitting on the chair we are checking the copies in this vertebrae uh, sacral vertebrae this is a small kind of problem found in the life of the teacher this can be resolved by sharing their life by sharing their emotions by sharing their happiness and sorrow one more thing gaguri ma'am i would like to share what do i suggest to my teachers two teachers three teachers yeah, they are coming by the same transport some bus same bus same cab but they hardly know the name of their uh, spouse <laughs> their parents their kids and what the trend has been come after pandemic only social 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 media is there but they are not knowing the name of the neighbors after two home they are not knowing the name of name of the owner of all the flat members this kind of things which we have to inculcated which we will have to inculcate in the student and that can be the all problems will be resolved once the teacher will be happy and educators will be happy inside the classroom i would like i say to the my staff members my teachers just hold just left all the work of the school in the school, uh, in the school don't carry at home don't carry bundles at home to check the copies and do the work until uh, there is not an emergency and i am happy with my job i am happy with my uh, this all plannings and what and this is the same thing i do suggest more than 100 schools are in my touch i do suggest and uh, self care is very important not only for educators in all the sectors it's important once the once the teacher once an educator or the, any employee once they are once they have a clear vision of their life they will be happy and their child will definitely be will be happy with their parents thank you ma'am thank you so much sir uh, thank you so much both of you i think we really really had a very meaningful discussion absolutely heartwarming also uh, i would like to call back ajin sir for the vote of thanks please yeah gauri i completely agree uh, wonderful session very informative seamless and heartfelt but sir thank you so much uh, as always for giving us a great start for highlighting the importance of self care and i think also for stressing on the importance of uh, quality of life to avoid burnout and to i think words of wisdom uh, for all esteemed educators in this program coming from someone like you with decades of experience of heading one of the most eminent institutions in the country i think it is a great advice that teachers uh, should ensure that they take full advantage of all the facilities at their disposal be it school swimming pool gym uh yoga sessions and everything library so i think overall emphasis on uh, quality of life i think i think great advice uh, thank you so much sir thank you so much achin pratiba ma'am uh, i think uh, some wonderful points you highlighted starting with the fact that uh, to keep our professional and personal spheres uh, separate i think very important uh, to ensure that uh, we have we are able to do justice to each of this and second i think the other point that you brought forward which i'm sure stays with the entire audience all of us today being particular about our schedule being able to manage time because eventually this will also ensure that we have some me time for ourselves which is so important only then we will be able to take care of ourselves and be fresh for next day considering the fact that there is so much of responsibility on the shoulders of our educators the nation look forward to you So I think great advice, ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. Chaurasia. Uh, thank you yes, so sir. much. I think uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, being a part of this August gathering. Uh, some facts that you highlighted, of course, impact of COVID, you know, devastating pandemic, having ruined so many lives and causing so much of hardship. And I understand. I think each word that you said made a lot of sense. Of course, this is how it is. i also add that what you saw during covid last two years undoubtedly the way educators across the country they they actually rose to the occasion they stood up to the challenge they faced it and they ensured that our students do not lose the precious academic year in the hats of all educators is really an example for for all of us i think as a nation we really adore them the other point that you highlighted sir making a plan and analyzing it and of course the importance of leading a balanced life Ensuring that we cultivate other hobbies, be it listening to music, 
going for a calm walk. And also the importance of uh, networking, the importance of spending some me time with our neighbors, with our colleagues, and that necessarily not being confined to social media screens. So I think that, that that's really important. Achim, sir, one, one, great... yes, Achim, sir, please. one more thing. Actually, uh, these days, the teachers are not sharing their emotions to their colleagues, their staff members. True. This is the main vision. I think uh, um, I delivered what do I want to say. I understand. I understand. No, I completely agree with you. That's very important. It's really important that in case uh, we need help, to reach out to those who, who are near us, reach out to those who share the same objectives and have the same feelings. Of course, they're the best people to reach out to. They will understand our situation and, of course, you know, work with us to resolve them. So I think that's a wonderful advice. Instead of suffering in silence, it's really important to reach out for help. I couldn't take you with you more on that. So overall, great session. And I, I really thank members of the esteemed audience for their time here today evening. And I look forward to your continued support in the service to come. Thank you. Take care. And goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.